Okay, um, this video is going to explain uh, the determining the molar mass, or, sorry, determining the molar volume of a gas lab that we're doing a little bit later in this week. Um, the background section just kind of explains um, what we're doing in the lab, and essentially what we're doing is reacting magnesium with hydrochloric acid. It's going to generate hydrogen gas, and then we're going to capture that hydrogen gas in a tube. And then we're going to do some calculations with that um, to essentially figure out the um, volume of a gas at STP, standard temperature and pressure, which we already know uh, the volume of one mole of gas at STP should be 22.4 liters because we've learned that before. So we're going to see how close we can get to that actual uh, value in the lab that we're doing. Um, so some of the equations you might need, PV equals nRT, and then the combined gas law, P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. Um, <clears throat> this is what our setup is going to look like. And you did something similar to this last year. Um, this is a, uh, what's called a udiometer, okay? And um, basically what you're going to do is you're going to have, uh, down here at the bottom, you're going to have the magnesium, and everything's labeled here. Um, and then you're going to have a copper piece of copper wire wrapped around the magnesium to hold it in place. Um, <coughs> you're going to completely fill the tube up with water, and, and <coughs> excuse me. And then you're going to put it in a water bath, okay? And then um, you're going to have some hydrochloric acid in there as well in the tube, and that's going to start reacting with the uh, the magnesium. And as it does that, it's going to make hydrogen gas in the top part of the tube. And then what you're essentially going to do is you're going to let that finish reacting. And then once it's done reacting, you're going to want to equalize the, um, the level of the water in both the tube and the beaker that it's in. Okay. And once you do that, the atmospheric pressure will equal the, um, the pressure inside the tube. And so then you should be able to make all of your calculations. Okay. So... We'll, we'll go through all this to kind of explain it. Um, this table right here is going to tell you all the different uh, vapor pressures for water at various temperatures. And so you're going to need to measure the temperature of, um, of the water. And that will give you an idea of what the, the vapor pressure of that water is going to be. Um, <clears throat> and then we've got the pre-lab questions here. So I'm going to go through these in, in quite a bit of detail. Um, because if you know how to calculate the pre-lab questions, uh, this is very similar to some of the other labs we've done, you should know how to do the post-lab calculations fairly easily. Um, so they're giving us a scenario here where we've got 0 0.028 grams of magnesium and we're react reacting it with hydrochloric acid and it makes 31 milliliters of hydrogen gas. Um, and then it says the barometric pressure in the lab that day was 746 millimeters of mercury. Okay, So it says use Dalton's law and the vapor pressure of water at 22 degrees to calculate the partial pressure of the hydrogen gas. Okay, so right here, <laughs> when it tells us what the pressure in the lab was that particular day, which I'm going to have to give you that value uh, tomorrow when we do the lab, and you're just going to record that in your data table. Um, that pressure, if we come back up here to the picture of the tube, okay, so that's the pressure outside, 746 uh, millimeters of mercury. Okay. But remember what I said before, um, when you do this particular experiment, if you have the water levels equal in, uh, in both the tube and in the beaker that the tube is, is placed in, then the pressure on the inside should also equal 746 millimeters of mercury. Okay. So you're basically, what the lab tells you to do is move the tube up and down in the water until the water levels get equal because what you're doing there essentially is equalizing the pressure. Okay. So once you've done that, the pressure inside should be the same as the atmospheric pressure. Okay. But the pressure inside, that pressure is coming from two different gases. We've actually, uh, you had a manometer question like this on your AP packet the other day. Um, that pressure is coming from the H2O and it's coming from the hydrogen gas that gets produced. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to look at the fact that this is at, happening at 22 degrees. Oops, put that down. And we're going to come up here and look at 22 degrees. Okay. So when the temperature is 22 degrees in the lab, the, 
the water vapor pressure is 19.8 millimeters of mercury. Okay. 19.8. So they're telling us uh, 746 is the total pressure. We just need to subtract the 19.8 millimeters of mercury from that. And that is going to give us the, uh, the vapor pressure of the hydrogen gas itself. Okay. <clears throat> And I guess technically if we're doing sig figs here, then uh, it would be 726 millimeters of mercury. Comes out to 726.2, but since this number is only to the ones place. Um, and then it says use the combined gas law to calculate the corrected volume of hydrogen at STP. Okay, and it says watch your units for temperature and pressure. So, um, on this one, um, we basically want to figure out, and, and this is kind of an odd way to ask this, but what it's asking us essentially here is, okay, if we know our volume of hydrogen um, at 22 degrees and 746 millimeters of mercury, what is the volume of the hydrogen gas at um, standard temperature and pressure? Okay, so we're just going to use P1, the combined gas laws, P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. We're just going to plug everything in. Okay, so our initial pressure here we know is 746. I'm sorry, it's not 746. We just figured out it's 726, the pressure of the hydrogen. 726 times uh, the volume here of the hydrogen gas, it says, is 31.0 milliliters. <clears throat> we divide that by uh, the temperature, which is. 295. It says to be in Kelvin. And that's equal to, um, and we're thinking about standard temperature and pressure. Okay, standard pressure is one atmosphere, which is the same thing as 760 millimeters of mercury. So we have to keep our units the same here. Okay, we're going to multiply that by V2. That new volume is what we're actually trying to find here. Divided by, and then standard temperature is 273 Kelvin, or zero degrees Celsius. Okay. So then we're just going to find out what's, what would the volume of this hydrogen gas be um, if we were at STP. So 273. So I'm getting um, a volume of 27.4 um, milliliters of H2. Okay. Let me double check and make sure that's right. Okay, yeah, 27.4 milliliters or uh, 0 0.274, 0 0.0274 liters. Okay. Um, which actually we kind of need to know that for, for another problem that comes up here. 274 liters. So I'll write that down. What is the theoretical number of moles of hydrogen that can be produced from 0 0.028 grams of magnesium? And it says refer to equation 1 for the balanced equation for the reaction. Okay. If you look up at the top, <coughs> equation 1 is just the reaction of magnesium plus hydrochloric acid, giving you magnesium chloride plus H2. Okay. And this thing, if it's balanced, there's just a 2 in front of the HCl. Um, so, we just do a little stoichiometry here. We've got 0 0.028 grams of um, Mg, and we want to know the number of moles of hydrogen. Okay, so we're going to change it to moles of Mg first. One mole there are 24.3 grams. 24.31, close enough. Um, and then we're going to convert that from moles of magnesium to moles of hydrogen gas. And the nice thing about this is it's a one-to-one -one ratio here. So you basically take the 0 0.028 and you divide that by uh, 24.3. I'll go 305 because that's what it is on the periodic table. Um, 
and we're ending up with about 0 0.00 uh, let me see, figure one, one, five moles of H2. Okay, that's the theoretical number of moles that we should be able to uh, to make here. <coughs> and um, it says that we need to divide the corrected volume of hydrogen by the theoretical number of moles of hydrogen to calculate the molar volume. Okay, in other words, we want liters per mole here. Okay. So all you have to do is take what you found in number two, uh, divided by what you found in number three, 0 0.0274 liters, divided by 0 0.00115 moles. And we're thinking the number that we should get here should be fairly close to uh, 22.4. So let's see how close we are here, 0 0.0274 divided by... Okay, 23 point, meaning 23.8 here, liters per mole. And like I said, 22.4 is the accepted number. Um, so that's not, that's not too far off. Um, it's a little bit off, but it's not too far off. So that's that's how you would calculate that, okay? And if you get that close, you're, you're doing pretty good. Um, so that's the idea on the pre-lab, okay? The post-lab, very similar. Um, once you have done your reaction and all that stuff, oh, and just a couple of things about the actual procedure in case you watch this ahead of time. I'll probably reiterate this in class. Um, it says here to... Um, Get your piece of magnesium ribbon on, on step two on the procedure, uh, or actually step three. It says your teacher will provide a conversion factor. Well, the reason for that is in case you, we don't have balances that, that measure the magnesium because it's so light, um, we have a very precise balance in here we can use. And it will give you a pretty good reading on the mass of that magnesium. So don't worry about the, um, the conversion. I'm not going to give you conversion. You just measure it on that particular balance. Um, you want to make sure and make your copper cage really good. We did a lab similar to this last year, so you probably remember this. Um, but if you don't get your copper cage really good, then as the magnesium starts to react and it starts to shrink um, <clears throat> because it's reacting, it's going to tend to come out of the cage. And if it does that, it'll still react on top of the acid, but it'll take a lot longer to do so. Okay. Uh, so you want to make sure that it stays secure in the cage. Um, but that it's open enough to the hydrochloric acid that it can actually react. Um, <clears throat> the other instructions are essentially there, so I don't know that there's a lot that we need to talk about there. Um, you're just going to set it up the way it says to set it up. Um, once you uh, get your gas collected, then we're actually going to equalize the pressure using a big graduated cylinder that I will have. Um, probably on the center table, and so then you're just going to move it up and down in that graduated cylinder until you get the uh, liquid levels equal, and uh, that way you can make sure you equalize your pressure so that the pressure inside your tube is the same as the atmospheric pressure on the outside. Okay, all right. So things you have to record: length of the magnesium ribbon. Um, go ahead and record that, but you're not going to end up using that in your calculations because I'm not giving you a conversion factor. The mass of your mg, you'll just record that directly. And we'll do two trials if we have time. We might only have time for one trial. Um, I would actually be surprised if we had time for two. Um, <clears throat> evidence of a chemical reaction, you're just writing something there. Volume of the hydrogen gas, that's going to come from your udiometer tube. Uh, corrected volume of the H2, it actually will tell you how to, to calculate that. But that's essentially the same as number two on the prelab. This corrected volume of H2 right here. Um, number two on the prelab asks you to use the combined gas law of P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. Um, and so that's what this corrected volume of H2 is there. That's corrected volume at STP. Uh, the temperature of the water bath, you're going to need to measure that. Um, and actually, the one you're going to want to measure is the one in the graduated cylinder because that's, that's when the pressure uh, gets equalized. So that's when your temperature really matters. And then barometric pressure, I'm going to have to give that to you on the day that we do the lab.
and I'll I'll look that up so that you can record it. Um, all right. So here's the way these first four work. I showed you the pre-lab in detail, um, so that I could just tell this to you. Um, take a look back here at the pre-lab questions, and I can tell you exactly how they match up. Okay, so number one here is asking you to calculate the theoretical number of moles of hydrogen gas produced in trials one and trial two. Okay, you on your data table recorded the mass of the magnesium. Okay, so you're going to start with the grams of magnesium here, and then you're going to do this. You're going to do this calculation exactly like you did uh, number three on the prelab. Okay. Number two here, it says use the table in the background section to find the vapor pressure of water, the temperature of the water bath in this experiment, calculate the partial pressure. That is going to be exactly like uh, number one <coughs> on the pre-lab. Use the combined gas law to convert the measured volume of hydrogen to the ideal volume at STP. Okay, that's going to be exactly like um, number two on the pre-lab. I don't know why they mixed these up. And then number four here, divide the volume by the theoretical number to find the molar volume in liters per mole. That's what they want. That's going to be exactly like number four on your pre-lab. Okay? So those four questions should be pretty straightforward based on what you did on the pre-lab. Um, let's see what other questions we have here. Okay, so number five is asking... Let me get down to erase this first. <coughs> Number five is asking the average value of the molar volume of hy hydrogen. Okay, and that's going to come from if we get to two trials, which we might not. So your average value probably will be the same as uh, the value you got for your first trial calculation. Um, it says look up the literature value of the molar, vol molar volume of a gas in your textbook. You don't need to look that up. We know how much uh, the volume of a gas should be at STP. It should be 22.4. Okay, and so that number, uh, the accepted value here should be 22.4 liters per mole. Okay? Um, so then you're going to take whatever value you get and you're going to calculate a percent error on number five. Uh, number six says one mole of hydrogen gas has a mass of 2.02 grams. Use your value of the molar volume of hydrogen to calculate the mass of one liter of hydrogen gas at STP. And this is going to be the density of hydrogen gas. Okay, so what you have, um, I would just do this using dimensional analysis. Whatever your value of the molar volume of hydrogen is, let's say it's, uh, what was it on the pre lab, 23.8, I think, liters per mole. <coughs> um, what you actually need here is you need grams per liter. So actually, I would, I would flip this probably. Um, so we've got one mole of hydrogen gas, and there's 23.8 liters in that one mole. Okay, and then you can change the moles of hydrogen gas to grams of hydrogen gas using the 2.02 they give you up here, um, and that should give you grams per liter. And that's that's all they're asking for on that one. And then you're going to have to look up the um, density of hydrogen in grams per liter, that should be fairly easy to find online. Um, so then you're going to compare that to the uh, density that you calculate, and see how close that is. Um, it says, in setting up this experiment, a student noticed a bubble of air leaked into the graduated cylinder when it was inverted in the water bath. What effect did this have on the measured volume of hydrogen gas? Okay, so the last two questions here are really just error analysis type questions, which again, these are important because they tend to ask these types of things on the AP exam. Um, so we've got to think about um, what would happen if air leaked into that graduated cylinder. Okay, so in other words, if air gets into your udiometer tube, now you've got not only uh, hydrogen gas, but you've got uh, well, and, and you also have the water vapor um, that you have to account for. But now you've got um, now you've got just some air in there, okay? And so that's going to actually affect your volume. You have to think about how that would affect your volume measurement and, and everything else. And I'm going to leave you to sort of think about that because I want you to think that through, okay? 
Then this last one here, this one's a little bit tricky, so I'll get you started on this one and let you figure out how this would affect it. Um, if the magnesium ribbon is oxidized, then what you have here is you have MgO. Okay, not all of it. You kind of got a mixture of MgO and magnesium. Okay. Now the thing you need to know here that you might not, when MgO reacts with hydrochloric acid, it does not produce hydrogen gas. Okay. So no hydrogen gas produced here. Okay. This produces hydrogen gas, and so that's kind of weird looking. This is, I'm drawing a line through my equal sign here. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so what you have there is you'd actually have less hydrogen gas being produced if the magnesium was oxidized, okay? So then you can think about if there's less hydrogen gas being produced here, then how would that affect uh, my experiment? How would that affect my calculations, okay? So I'm going to let you kind of think about those last two, um, but that's the basic idea of how you would calculate that, okay? And that's it for that lab. Not uh, entirely difficult. It should be fairly easy as far as the calculations. It's a little bit harder than the last couple that we've done, because the last couple we've done have involved almost no calculations. So, um, but that's that, and hopefully that will get you up to speed on some of the concepts of Dalton's partial pressure, collecting a gas over water, you know, correcting for that water vapor pressure and all that stuff. All right, see you.